I'm sure by now everybody out there has seen the news that Hummer is releasing an all new vehicle. It's actually going to be a GMC this time. It's going to be a GMC Hummer EV because the Hummer brand is not coming back. You can consider this a sub brand of the GMC line. And that makes a lot more sense than having separate dealers for General Motors all new electric truck. Now there's a lot that we don't know about the Hummer EV, but before we go too deep into it, I should say that there is more that we know about the Hummer EV than the Tesla Cybertruck. So I know a lot of folks out there are saying, but wait, but wait, the Tesla Cybertruck is coming out. And I'm sure the Cybertruck will be coming out probably around on time. So about the same time that we see the Hummer EV on sale late next year. But at the moment, we don't know very much about the Tesla Cybertruck. We know, for instance, that a lot of the design cues that we see in the one that they were launching not that long ago are not really going to be road legal. The tires sticking out a bit from the body, the way the headlights are designed, the fact that there's no third brake light, etc. So we know that a lot of design cues will have to be updated for actual compliance on the road. And if the Cybertruck is ever going to be sold in Europe, then the front end is far too blunt for pedestrian safety, unless they try and go in a different direction with some sort of active safety technologies. So Generally speaking, we know more about the Hummer EV than about the Tesla Cybertruck, but let's dive into the Hummer here. So we know that it's going to have 35 inch tire standard, 37s will fit in those enormous wheel wells, and we know that this is going to be a very, very big truck. In terms of length, it's 216 inches long. That's not too far off of a lot of the half ton trucks that we see on the market right now, but it's going to be pretty heavy because we have a 200 kilowatt hour battery pack in the top end version. General Motors has not been horribly specific about which battery is going to be in which version of the Hummer EV. And they haven't really said that this is going to have a 200 kilowatt hour battery pack, but we can logically infer that because at their battery pack launch for the new battery technology, they said that the largest version will be a 24 module version. It will have a capacity of 200 kilowatt hours. And then they said that the Hummer EV is going to be getting that 24 module pack. So logically 200 kilowatt hours. That's a pretty momentous battery pack because this is going to be the largest battery pack theoretically on sale in North America. It may tie with the Rivian pickup truck. Anyway, you slice it, this is double the battery that we find in any other EV out there, the longest range of which would be the Tesla Model S and Model X, which have a 100 kilowatt hour pack. But that means that the battery pack is logically going to be pushing the weight up into the three quarter ton and one ton territory. So curb weight is probably going to be substantially similar to something like the Ram Power Wagon, not the off-road versions of the Ford F-150. Although General Motors has not released detailed specifications just yet, it appears that the width of the Hummer EV is probably going to be around the same as the new Ram TRX or the Ford Raptor, so probably right around 88 inches or so. That's why we find the clearance lights all the way around. It's going to be notably wider than the F-150 Ram 1500 in their normal forms, probably about six inches wider than the average half ton truck. That extra width makes sense because Hummer is really targeting an off-road audience with the new Hummer EV. And that's really obvious when we take a look at the suspension system. So they're claiming 13 inches of travel, a maximum of 15.9 inches of ground clearance. Under normal operation, ground clearance should be between nine and a half and 10 inches or so, somewhere in that range. If you move to the off-road mode, you'll get about 11 and a half to 12 inches of overall clearance. And then if you put it into the extract mode, which will be available in most trims, that will raise things up to 15.9, one of the highest clearances that you find in the industry. The extra clearance is certainly needed because of the size of the Hummer. It's 216 inches long and has a 135.6 inch wheelbase. That's significantly longer on both of those dimensions than the average off-road vehicle that you're going to find rock crawling on the off-road park. But according to Hummer, they've decided to make this a very, very aggressive off-road vehicle. Now we need to talk about those performance numbers because frankly, the numbers that General Motors is advertising are a little bit misleading. A thousand horsepower and 11,500 pound-feet of torque sounds astronomical, but they're talking about theoretical wheel torque essentially. So after you've gone through whatever transmission that this vehicle has, the final drive ratio, et cetera, the axle ratios, then theoretically you get 11,500 pound-feet of torque. Now, if we were to do that same kind of math in a Ram TRX, the all new 6.2 liter supercharged Ram TRX, you'd get a whopping 28,692 pound-feet of torque. If on the other hand, we simply talk about motor torque, that is torque leaving the electric motor and entering whatever transmission or transfer case that this vehicle has, it's probably gonna be around 750 to 800 pound-feet of torque. That's a more rational number. Of course, the important thing to know about EVs 
is, is that the horsepower and torque figures are a little bit difficult to compare to a gasoline or diesel powered vehicle because electric motors produce their power very differently. There's an awful lot of torque at zero RPM and then at higher RPMs, the torque tends to drop out a little bit. So the power delivery profile is quite different. That's why we see a lot of electric vehicle companies out there that aren't really giving us too many details about the electric motor. Tesla, for instance, has really stopped giving us detailed specifications about their electric motors. We also don't see detailed electrical specifications on Toyota's new hybrid systems with their electric motors either, because instead they've preferred to give us performance figures. So Tesla will tell you how fast their vehicle goes zero to 60, but not really tell you exactly how they get there. I think that makes sense with EVs. And that also makes sense with the Hummer EV, because any way you slice it, it's going to be very, very fast. The top end version they're saying is going to go zero to 60 in three seconds flat. That's definitely believable because electric motors can again give you instant torque and we also have a very big battery pack. A lot of folks don't realize but the size of the battery pack, the number of cells in the battery pack really has a very direct relationship to the amount of power you can pull out of the battery pack at once, power dissipation. And this battery pack is likely going to be giving us better power dissipation than we see in any modern Tesla. That's what's going to be required to get probably around 7,000 to 7,500 pounds zero to 60 in three seconds flat. The other important thing that we don't know for off-roading are the ratings of the electric motors themselves, because a thousand horsepower could be the maximum dissipation of the battery pack. Most likely that is the case, but that doesn't mean that the electric motors have to be rated at 500 horsepower up front and 250 horsepower for each of the rear electric motors. This vehicle theoretically could have three 1000 horsepower electric motors. And when required, it could send all 1000 horsepower to a single electric motor. And then when you're just driving full out, it's trying to split that power from the battery pack as equitably as possible among the two or three motors, depending on which version of the Hummer EV you get. We really don't know any details here. We do know, however, that the front electric motor is going to get a locking mechanical differential and the rear electric motors are not going to be mechanically connected. So to send power across the rear, it's going to just send more power to one electric motor than the other. It's also going to give the rear torque vectoring capability depending on the version that you get. The key thing about this motor setup is that we do not know whether all the system power can be sent to a single electric motor or a single front wheel, for instance. Now, again, if all three of these motors were rated at 1000 horsepower, they had relatively equal horsepower and torque figures, then theoretically you could send entire system horsepower to a single rear wheel, whether that's the left one or the right one or to the front electric motor, and then it could mechanically send that left or right. Or on the other hand, are these three relatively equally sized motors and it could only send a third of system output to a single rear wheel. We just don't know the answer to that. But we do know that compared against mechanical four wheel drive systems like you'd find in a Raptor or a GMC pickup truck that was very off-road focused with the mechanical locking rear differential and center coupling, it could send 100% of engine power to a single rear wheel. Now on to the battery pack. General Motors is claiming that we're going to have a range of up to 350 miles expected. Now, no official EPA numbers are out yet because this vehicle is not in production yet, of course. But that sounds logical because this is going to have a battery that's, again, double the size of the largest battery that we find in the Model S and Model X. And you should expect the Hummer EV to be one of the least efficient electric vehicles available in North America. That's simply because of the size and the weight of this vehicle and the fact that they're going to be giving this all-terrain tires. 35-inch tires are standard, as I said before. 37s will fit in the wheel wells, according to GMC. Logically, your range is going to drop the more aggressive the tire you put on the vehicle. What's really interesting about the new battery technology, however, is not the size of the battery pack, but the way that GM has engineered some of the energy management systems and the charging systems on the vehicle. We don't know how fast it's going to charge at level two, but we do know that when it DC fast charges, it can choose whether to put the two layers of the battery pack in series mode or in parallel mode, giving us either a 400 volt system or an 800 volt system. When the vehicle is driving along the road normally, it's going to be in 400 volt mode, it looks like. But for DC fast charging using those newer Electrify America stations that will also work with the Porsche Taycan, it's going to operate in serial mode. So that way the two batteries will give you 800 volts and you can use that 800 volt system for up to 350 kilowatts of fast charging. According to General Motors, that should be able to give you about 100 miles of range in just 10 minutes. 
This is another area where the math definitely seems to pan out. Because we know, for instance, that a Model 3 or a Model Y using the largest battery pack available, the 72 kilowatt hour pack, can charge about 250 to 255 kilowatts. And we know that the Porsche Taycan, which has a relatively similarly sized battery pack, it's a little bit larger, but the number of cells is not too different from what we see in the Model 3 and Model Y, will top out at around 260 to 270 kilowatts, depending on exactly what's going on. We're now talking about a battery pack that is about double the size of these packs. So as far as how fast you're charging a single cell in these packs, it's likely that they'll actually be charging a little bit slower than an individual cell in a Model 3 or Model Y. So 350 kilowatts is definitely a believable number. And I wouldn't be surprised if theoretically you could get this pack to charge at 400 kilowatts or perhaps 450 or 500 at some point in the future if we could ever get charging stations that could support that. According to General Motors, there will be other battery packs available in the Hummer EV, but we don't have any specific details on them just yet. One of the coolest features about the Hummer EV is certainly going to be the roof design. It combines what I guess you'd call a Targa top for the front row with a T-top for the second row. There is going to be a bar that goes from the B pillar to the B pillar and then a T post right there above the second row passenger's heads. So those two modules will come off leaving you a beam right in front of you. But over the driver and front passenger, you can actually remove everything, including the corner stops for the windows. According to GM, all the panels will be easy to remove and they will all fit inside the frunk of the Hummer. We are going to have a front trunk or frunk, whatever you want to call it, and it's big enough to accommodate all of those panels. So you can take them with you if you're out off-roading or you're just going out for a weekend, you want to remove your roof, but you want to be able to put it back on later if it decides to rain. Now let's talk about pricing because oddly enough, that's one of the things that we do know, even though we're not going to be seeing the base version of the Hummer EV until 2024. Yes, about four years from the time that I'm recording this video. Now, we know that the launch edition called Edition 1 is going to happen at the end of 2021, so about a year away from the time that you're watching this video. You better bring a big wallet, however, because that's going to start at $112,595. This is theoretically going to be the top end version of the Hummer EV. It's going to give you the biggest battery pack, zero to 60 in three seconds. We're going to have the three motor system, torque vectoring, the air suspension with the extract mode, adaptive dampers, and four wheel steering. The four wheel steering system is interesting because it allows the Hummer EV to do a crab walk is what they're calling it rather than a tank turn. So don't confuse this with the zero turn radius ability in theoretically the new Rivian pickup truck. That's enabled by the Rivian having four electric motors that can spin in different directions. We don't have that kind of system in the Hummer EV. Instead, the Hummer will turn the front wheels at 10 degrees and the rear wheels at 10 degrees in phase with one another and then go at a diagonal versus where the vehicle is pointed. So you can go 10 degrees off of exactly where you're pointed. It will not turn in circles. However, it does have a very tight turning radius because if you crank the wheel all the way in regular steering mode, it can turn about as tight as a Tesla Model 3. That's because the wheels would then turn out of phase, allowing the rear wheels to go a slightly different direction than the front and turn much tighter. But it's not gonna have that zero turn radius that we find in the Rivian. Almost a full year later, we're going to get the EV3X version. That's going to be $99,995. And at this point, I should remind you that General Motors has no EV tax credits left. So this is going to be the price that you're going to have to pay, very much like Tesla. This is going to give you a three motor system, torque vectoring, the watts to freedom mode, which is what they're calling launch control. We assume that that's going to be the same zero to 60 time, but it's hard to verify. General Motors did not specify it all in their launch paperwork. And keep in mind, this is going to be starting at $99,995. So think of this as the base version of the Edition 1. You could option it up likely to the same content that we find in that model. It'd probably end up around the same price tag. Then in spring of 2023, that is quite a long ways from now, we're going to be getting the EV2X version. That's going to have a two-motor drive system, not the three-motor system. It will have the air suspension and four-wheel steering, however, for $89,995. If you want to spend less than $80,000 in theory on your new Hummer EV, that will be the EV2 version coming in 2024, $79,995. It will have two electric motors, but we don't know too many details about it. We don't know how far it's going to go on a battery charge. We don't know how big the battery pack is going to be. We don't really know anything about the feature set on that model either, but expect it to be a stripped down version of the EV2X. Be sure and let me know what you think about the Hummer EV in the comment section, and keep in mind that there's a lot that we don't know about the Hummer EV at this point. We, for instance, don't know how much it weighs. We don't know how wide it is. We don't know any payload or towing specifications. We don't know how fast it's going to charge on level two. We also don't know which options and packages are going to be available in which trim levels, and we don't know a lot of details about, theoretically, the base trim that's going to be coming in about four years. 
I wouldn't be surprised if the Hummer EV came out with around 10 to 12,000 pounds of towing capability. That wouldn't surprise me at all based on the torque figures that I'm seeing here. I also wouldn't be surprised if we ended up getting some sort of high half ton truck payload capability, somewhere around 2,000 pounds, for instance. I think it's unlikely that we're going to get payload capability of a three quarter ton or one ton truck simply due to the sheer weight of the battery pack that we have on board. But it's also likely that it could be a little on the low side for a half ton truck. It's possible that it could max out somewhere around 12 or 1500 pounds. We just don't know yet. Keep in mind that when you're towing a trailer, you should expect your range to at least drop by half, depending on what you're towing, especially if you're talking about towing some of those heavier weights that likely will be advertised for the Hummer EV. If for instance, you were towing a decently sized 10,000 pound trailer behind your Hummer EV, you should expect fuel economy and range to drop significantly. You could end up with a range of 150 to 120 miles, for instance. Now that's not unique to the Hummer EV at all. We see exactly the same sort of range loss in any EV out there. Be sure and let me know what you think about that as well down there in the comment section. Also be sure and check out the AOA merch site. We're going to have new merch designs. There's actually going to be one coming later this week. At the moment, there's just two designs up there on the channel. There are also some additional AOA accessories and uh, stickers and things like that that you can buy. Be sure and find that over at aoamerch.com. You can also find me over at facebook.com, Instagram, and of course the Twitters.